All right, hi, welcome back. Uh, I know that we said I was gonna start the samples, but I took a look at these already and none of them have an update in terms of like the sketches. No new sketches, but we do have a new file from Ellery. Minet is gone, and she's left behind one hell of a mess. This base is falling apart, cannibalized to build way stations out in the ocean. The communications array sliced away, life support failing. Why did she- where did- did she even commandeer this research base from? There's no way Baikal would have supplied it willingly after what she did to them. Uh, hmm. What did she call me out here for? To witness her disappearance, or did she simply want me to encounter, as she did, the impossible life of this ocean? How could it have gone ignored for hundreds of years of exploration and conquest? There are too many questions to even begin. All I can do is keep an account of what happens here, so that if I can't answer these questions, someone else might. It'll be weeks, maybe months, until the next ship passes close enough to pick up on my shuttle transponder. Until then, I'm alone. Except for me, doing all the work, picking up the samples. This place is unbelievably important. Our first contact with life beyond Earth. But something else is happening here too, and I, I need to know what it is. I think I'm falling in love with the person operating the suit. Uh, is there anything else? It's still lit up. Do I have to go to the bottom? There we go. Uh, but yeah, when I started up, I just wanted to check in, and I had sam uh, processed these two samples, hoping that it would give some more taxonomy reports with the uh, pictures, but not quite. If we go out today, let's see. We can go to the drop-off. Yeah, let's go to the drop-off. Maybe another day I'll come back and I'll go through these different samples. To finish out the uh, the journal, but for now today, on to the drop off. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a little bit since I've played this game. As always, I feel like I'm always saying that. Uh, are you back with me? We're 20 seconds from the ocean floor. Good. I was getting lonely in here. All right. We are descending fast. The drop is huge. One and a half kilometers down. Let's stay focused. Focused. We have no data on the zone of the ocean. The light of least 667 cc's, three stars, barely makes it this deep. I've got my headlamps on. You'll have to be my eyes. I want to work my way along the slope to the northeast. We are looking for any trace of Minet or of the roves she sent down here. Let's get to it. I wonder if I can even disobey her. I feel like it wouldn't let me go this way. Beyond the reach of the suit's lamps, the slopes descend slowly into the dark towards the abyssal plain. I don't think I got rid of any new samples. I still have a bunch of these. Still waters, heavy currents of the upper ocean don't reach down here. Bioluminescent glow up through the silt, a faint but noticeable blue, uh, chemical blue. Very pretty. Tangled veil. These drifting veils of material appear to be creatures of some kind. These silken creatures are almost transparent, apart from those lights. What are they? Uh, they appear to be creatures of some kind. They're pulsing faintly with pinpricks of light. Kind of like a comb jellyfish. Comb jellyfish are like super pretty. They're bioluminescent and they kind of flow in the waters. I saw them once on a, a dock and they were so pretty and when you moved your hands through them they like glowed a little extra more. It, it was really cool. Uh, in the headlamps of the suit I occasionally see a veil, thin veil 
veil-like texture to the surface of these veils. Blah, blah, blah. What substances sustain them? I actually don't know what make home jellyfish glow. Diaphanous veils twitch suspended in the water. They are seeded with pinpricks of bioluminescence like distorted starfishes. Star fields. The comb jellies even have like, I don't know, these kinds of like ribbons. They gather in groups, which I'm calling tangles. They seem to be intentional formations, but for what purpose? These lights the veils produce come directly from beneath their skin. They shift from transparent to light emitting in undulating waves. The comb jellies, it's like this pattern, but it's on their back or I guess whole body. Um, but they don't swim in a line like this. They're more, um, clumped like jellyfish are, I guess. Oh, did I get shocked? <laughs> Whoops. Did this, this mess up my power? Though tangled and without any clear sensory organs, these creatures seem to have a strong control over their position in the water. Unlike jellies. Between these two veils, some clear water is visible, a temporary corridor between two hanging sheets. Does it happen again? Oh yeah, whoops. It really doesn't want me to do that. Studied along veils are remnants of creatures that have been confused by the lights and caught by these transparent hunters. It's receding a little bit. I don't want to go back through because I've already gone through a couple times by accident. Ooh, yes, all the data gathered. Wide, delicate, silken panels of bioluminescence. I'm naming these strange creatures snare, snare veils. They are such beautiful traps. The veil is blinking the same sequence of lights over and over. Perhaps this is a way of detracting curious prey into their grip. Why didn't Manet tell anyone about this place? The life here, it's the biggest discovery in human history. Away from the veil, the water returns to his linky, inky darkness. Do you think she's trying to protect it? No, I don't. It's true, she told me perhaps there are other secrets she may be trying to hide. Uh, it's restricting the strong beams of the suit lamps. She also had her secrets, but this feels bigger than that. She was always like this, I guess. I don't think I missed a sample spot to like bring the light with us. Uh, silt has gathered around the base of two large outcrops forming a natural respite from the steady downward pitch of the slopes. Basalt Tower. These towers of angular stones are telltale signs of volcanic processes active under the planet's surface. I wonder if we'll get to a volcano. Rove debris. That, what must have been one of Manet's improvised remote vehicles, lies twisted in the silt. Could it have been disabled by the veils? Or did she leave it for us to find? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This debris is one of Manet's roves. A human. Wait, to my left, is that? It's her! I didn't expect to actually find her in this game. I thought she was just going to be forever talked about. She's here. She's alive. Alive? Even though she's free diving? We were reading life signs and she's breathing? That can't be right. How long has she been here lying in the silt? We have to bring her back to the base, but I don't... Okay, focus, Ellery. What do we do? We can use the road to boost our signal to the base. We can send the drone when we start with the ascend. Get me back to the road's debris and hook us up with the terminal. I really like the sound design in this game. It's really good. Also, I can't believe that she was free diving so far down. I guess that's what we're going to find out, right? Is like how she even... Okay, we're synced. Call the drone now. We need to get her out of here. 
Did I not do it? Link. Link. Maybe I pressed that out of order. But yeah, the free diving would be pretty cool. I want to be Manet. Basically mermaid. Uh, we're offline. You're back. I need to talk. I'm on the medical level. She's totally unresponsive. I don't know what to do. I don't even understand how she's still alive. I keep going back to the image of her, blue, silent, staring out of the silt. A thin stream of bubbles flickering from her mouth. How long had she been there? The pressure alone should have crushed her at that depth. Doesn't make sense. But she's alive. I, I need to talk to her, but nothing. I, I want to understand. I want to know what's going on here. I haven't seen her in years, not since she left. Dot, dot, dot. And now, dot, dot, dot. Here she is. Do you ever imagine all the things are going to say to a person when you see them again? I wanted to scream at her, to whisper to her, to tell her I came here for her. I didn't know why I did, but I did. I think it's because I had to hope for something to change from, uh, for there to be an explanation. For months, the we spent together to mean something again. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. Yeah, you are. This makes twice, two times she's turned up my life upside down. At least this time I knew what I was setting myself up for. It's not like I had anywhere else to be. The further I am from that dying planet, the better. What comes next? We keep going. She was looking for something out here, something important enough to leave her like this. Our turn to take that forward, to find that explanation. I think she's built that lab in the bloom to study those mineral skeletons, artificers she called them, but something was leading her deeper beyond the drop-off. Let's start with the rose she sent out. Maybe they found something we didn't? I'll mark their last known positions on the dive map and I'll be here until you are ready to go. I don't think I gathered anything. Ooh, we have another log. Two logs in one day. Um, I'm also curious if on another planet, because like water is more incompressible than other kinds of liquid, if like the diving depth would be the same, or if there was more, I don't know, oxygen, if there could even be more oxygen in there, or if it would pretty much be just as crushing to be she was like what 1500 i don't know if it's in meters or kilometers in this game but like definitely be crushed i'd be curious if it was like the ocean clearly they're telling the story that she has like mermaid powers but anyway Monet is gone she's left me behind one hell of a mess wait what she is still alive. I never thought I would see her again, not after she sliced the core from the base on Kefler 62F, and I took the shuttle to God knows where. I spent weeks slowly freezing in that base, waiting for the Baikal team to come and get me after it, it fell apart. There was never any life on Kepler. Manet had faked the whole thing. She waited wanted the data course she knew by call would provide when she gave them the evidence of first contact. By call blamed me. The work as consulting biologists collapsed. Wait, what? There was never any life on it. She faked it and blamed her. I limped back to Earth to take a post-grad position on that dying planet. Is it she me? Yeah. yeah. There is little need for marine biologists in a place where the only oceanic life is kept in tourist-choked reserves. That's where I stayed, watching the endless exodus of humans with enough money to leave, looking out across a dead ocean at the print pics of their shuttle rocket flares. 
Until Mene called me here, I should blame her for everything, but I just want to know why, perhaps now. If she ever wakes up, I can ask her. I would be surprised, actually, if there is any human life. If the ocean were dead, because, like, all of our oxygen comes from the ocean. And, like, weather and stuff. <laughs> but, uh... Cool. Let's look at where we're diving. One, two. I wonder if she really didn't find any life or not, or if, oh, it's in meters, 1500 meters. But yeah, I just wonder if there was actually life on the other planet and she was just kind of using her. Ellery, Manet was using Ellery. The Eastern plane, I guess we'll get the one on the right first. Bubbling sands, the occasional silver bubble breaks the surface of the flat silt, carrying a cloudy trail of sediment behind it. We still have another tool that is yet to be used. Pockmarks. Ahead, the seeps have created small craters in the seabed where brine is gathered in clouded pools. Ooh, look at that. Brine pools, shimmering landscape of ghostly pools stretches out in the lamps. The dense brine sitting in the craters like undersea ponds. I wonder what it looks like to actually be a... Uh, uh, brine pools, the methane seeps here must be forming them. The pools themselves will be toxic and also anoxic. Let's navigate carefully. They are beautiful fog skin puddles sunk into the seabed, but, but they are dangerous. Uh, the seeps imprint the geological patterns underlying rock into the silt, forming both deep pools and untouched rises. Can we go through them? Can we sample them? Here we go. Creature pa patterns of dents in the sa sand show the paths of feathery creatures that cross from pillar to pillar in slow loops. Crab-like creatures. This crab-like creature is moving slowly across the seafloor. Their crawling creatures seem to keep them to themselves. Let's keep track of where we find them. Bristling fronds, these feather fronds are growing along the edge of the brine, waving their matted leaf-like limbs. They sway these swaying fronds, are they a colony or a single creature? I'll start recording my observations. I like half read this. These feathery fronds are growing along the edge of the brine, waving their matted leaf-like limbs through the water. The bristling fronds. Each of the many limbs of these branching creatures is carefully dipped into the brine pools one by one before pulling back. One, I'm curious if like these methane pools, is it like methane like pea methane? Or fart methane, I should say. I think that's where I think of it. How can these creatures survive out here among the brine? I'll start keeping notes. Silt-legged stone. Stilt legged stone. These tall crab like creatures towers above the brine pools, an unusual assortment of rock shells and bones adorn its back. Like a hermit crab almost. On closer inspection, the large translucent crest appears to be gas filled organ of bubbles of some kind rising from a silt in the shell. Glistening bubbles. Um. Do we have space? Yeah. Ooh, the music is getting epic. 
It's a mucus bubble. The multi-chambered mucus bubble found on the ocean floor. What are they saying about them? That the cares of each frond seem to be modified with reddish substance. Does it grow amongst these hairs? Before I forget, this holy crab thing. I'm curious. I don't know exactly what it is. It's something about how crabs have evolved so many different times. I think I've read a headline about it. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but I think it's funny. Or at least these people saw the same headline as me. That crabs are just everywhere. For whatever reason, that structure is just super common. And even through, though like, maybe is it divergent evolution? How in different situations, the same sort of features end up popping up anyway. It's crazy because even though there's like a couple different branches you could go down. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but yeah, if there's a bunch of different ways you can go down the path. Somehow at the end of so many of them, there's still crabs. Uh, microbial mats. Bright orange carpets of microbial growth gathered beneath the waving fronds stretch away from the pool. We could sample them here. Oh, whoops. Did I miss that? Oh, we have to go there. <laughs> whoops. Let's get more mucus. Or fronds or whatever. Frond. Brine mat. The orange bacterial pool. A sandy rise. Maybe we'll get a little less pooling. Um, I feel like going through here might be a little dangerous, so I'm just going to stick over here. Now it's actually kind of nice to see the, the path that it goes in. It said poison remains. Is this the poison remains? Yeah. Along the edge of the larger pools, the shells and skeletons of creatures loom out of the silt, victim to the toxic brine. Lake Causeway. This rise projects towards the vast brine lake in the east, cutting between deeper pools. Crater Strip. Unlike the shallow, steep marks in the south, these cr deep craters plunge through the silt in the bedrock. Sure. These aren't seat pools. Something impacted the seafloor here. Do I go up, down, around? Meteors, but how would they get so deep? Or could some creature have left these? Or did the meteor hit beforehand? And then it happened to fill up with a bunch of water? Right? I wonder if you there are like craters on our seafloor or not. The silt bank allows the passage between two parallel strips of craters leading to the north. What's this one say? I try not to click them because next time then I'll know like I didn't go that way. But I just I'm just curious, man. It seems like it's going in a similar direction anyway. This is an empty crater. Empty of brine, this crater was clearly caused by a large impact, showing radial cracks in the rock spreading from every single point. Isolated oasis. Despite the toxic brine on all sides, this glowing oasis clings to its rock even if it's melted away. Okay, let's throw this in our suit. I should have checked what it did better, but that's okay. We got... Some deep pollen. What's this one best for? Power. Bright fan. These fans found in the bloom. The, uh, these fans seem to play a central role in the ecosystem here. I'm going to start recording data. These creatures are fan-shaped filter feeders. However, these variants glow with a cold fire. They're precariously seated among the pools. This fan shows signs of decay. It's amber waves of light stuttering and flickering unevenly. 
Pretty. Pale petals. Trefoil petals which gather around the glowing fans of the deep. Are these petal-shaped creatures? They only grow around the glowing fans. Let's start logging data. Do, do, do. There's a bunch of different stuff down here. Fan sheath. With a bunch of pollen. Uh, I guess we'll go this way. Disabled rove. Uh, the rove must have been attracted by some signal among the pool, but it became another victim of the corrosive brine. One of Manet's roves. It looks like this one's disabled by the brine. The supplies the Manet equipped with it with are still intact, though. We can resupply. Open the terminal and see what this guy found down here. Do do. Doop. Get some map data from the little rove. Oh wow, you found something big. Didn't you, little guy? Not me. It looks like... Is that a wreck? Incredible. The debris field stretches all the way northwest from here. It must have been a large freighter or research vessel we have to see this thing come on we can head back to base after debris field i think we're gonna have to leave the debris field for next time but thanks for hanging out and catch you next time